Waheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Waheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Welcome to the Sikh Dharma International Series of Educational How-To Videos. This video is about Prashad, or Gur Prashad, the sweet confection that is served at the completion of all Sikh Gurdwara programs. Gur Prashad is blessed by the Ardas, or group prayer, the vibration of the Sangit chanting, and the hukam which is read just prior to serving it. In addition, during the Ardas, the Gur Prashad is cut with a kirpan, or steel knife, which sanctifies it and represents giving the strength of fortitude and faith. So the Sangit receives both mercy and vitality. Because of this, Gur Prashad is considered to be a blessing from the Guru. Many people call it Kara Prashad. Kara because it refers to the bowl in which it is made. We call it Gur Prashad because we believe that rather than putting the attention on the container in which it is served, we should honor the Guru's blessing that it embodies. As the Sri Singh Sahib Ji described it, Gur Prashad is the gift of the Guru. Prashad means infinite gift. Prashad is the infinite taste or infinite experience. Gur means formula. Anything which makes things easy is called Gur. Anything which takes away darkness and brings the light is called Guru. Gur Prashad is the infinite taste of that formula. The sweetness of the Gur Prashad reminds us of the abundance and sustenance that we receive from our Guru. It reminds us that everything that comes to us in life is the Guru's gift, or Prashad, and is therefore sweet. Gur Prashad can be made in almost any clean kitchen or cooking facility as long as it is prepared with the correct ingredients and blessed by the Guru's Bani and Hukam. The preparer of the Gur Prashad should have their head covered and have freshly washed hands. The exact recipe may differ from person to person. The type of sweetener used, or the type of wheat flour used, or even the altitude and personal preference may determine the exact proportions used. When Guru Gobind Singh gave the original recipe, it was equal weights of flour, water, ghee, and gur. Gur is also known as jaggery or shakar. Gur is unrefined, solidified cane juice that is often available at Indian grocery stores. As we consider honey to be a healthier sweetener than sugar, we replace the sugar or gur with honey, although many people simply use sugar. You will need measuring cups, one deep pot to boil the water with honey, one large pot with a curved bottom to mix the ghee and the flour. This pot should be twice as deep as the combined ingredients when they bubble and expand. Two long steel spoons, pot holders, one cup of ghee, one and a quarter cup of wheat flour, two cups of water, one cup of honey, or whatever sweetener you want to use. Measure out the ingredients so they are ready before you begin cooking. This recipe should make enough Gur Prashad to serve 25 to 35 people. Recite a short Ardas or prayer before beginning to prepare the Gur Prashad. Then as you start to prepare the Gur Prashad, begin reciting Japji Sahib. If you do not know Japji by heart, you can have a second person read it aloud on the side of the cooking area or a recording can be played. If you finish Japji before the Gur Prashad is finished, please continue chanting the Mool Mantra or Waheguru until the cooking is completed and the Gur Prashad has been brought into the Gurdwara. Begin to heat the water and honey on a medium-high heat in a pot large enough that the level of liquid is not too close to the top of the pot so that when it comes time to pour it out, you can pour it out without spilling. While the water and honey are heating up, begin to melt the ghee in the pan with the curved bottom. Gradually add the flour once the ghee is completely liquefied. Once the flour is added, turn the heat to medium and continually stir with a steel spoon or spatula so that the flour does not burn. As the honey water starts to boil, foam will appear on the top. Carefully remove the foam and dispose of it. Turn it down to a rolling boil so that it can remain hot while the flour is cooking 
and continue to remove the foam as it appears. When the flour turns golden brown and begins to have a roasted smell, the heat under the flour can be reduced and it is time to add the boiling honey water. If the honey water is no longer boiling, increase the heat to bring it back to a full boil. Stirring vigorously with the large spoon, mix the ingredients quickly to prevent burning and to make the texture smooth and consistent. The adding of the hot honey water to the pan with the ghee and flour mixture will cause the ingredients to rapidly bubble and expand. Be very careful because the mixture is very hot at this point and it can burn you if it splashes out of the pan. Continue to stir vigorously with the heat under the pan as the mixture cooks. The consistency should gradually change into its final form, not liquid, not solid, but somewhere in between, and it will effortlessly pull away from the sides of the pan. Continue to stir until you have reached this point. It will become a bit thicker once it has cooled. However it turns out is by the Guru's will, so don't worry too much about doing something wrong or about having to make the Gur Prashad to someone else's sense of perfection. Transfer the Gur Prashad to a clean stainless steel bowl and cover with a clean cloth. If the Gur Prashad is to be served right away, it is suggested to partially cool the mixture by placing the steel bowl into a shallow basin of cold water or by placing the Gur Prashad into a large bowl to disperse the heat. Or the Gur Prashad can be divided and placed into several smaller bowls and stirred to cool. Once the Gur Prashad is ready and it is covered with the clean cloth, carry it with devotion and respect into the Gurdwara. Gur Prashad should be present in the Gurdwara prior to a Nansa being sung. If the Gur Prashad is not present before the Guru, before the Anansab, the Kirtan should continue and then after the Gur Prashad has arrived, a Nansab can be sung. Present the Gur Prashad to the Siri Guru Granth Sahib covered with a cloth and place it on a table or raised surface next to the Guru's Manji Sahib, not higher than the Siri Guru Granth Sahib. Make sure that there are two smaller steel bowls, one for the Panj Pyare and one for the Guru Granthi. There can also be additional serving bowls to be used with larger gatherings so that several Sevadars can serve the Sangit members simultaneously. All Sevadars serving the Guru Prashad should wash their hands with soap and water before serving. When the Ardas is recited, one Sevadar should hold an unsheathed Kirpan during the Ardas standing near the Guru Prashad. Then, when the Guru Prashad is mentioned in the Ardas, the Sevadar should cut through the Prashad once or twice with the blade of the kirpan. It is not necessary to cut deeply or repeatedly. When the person reciting the ardas asks for any omissions to be covered, then proceed to cut the gur prashad as normal. After the completion of the ardas, the blade of the kirpan should be wiped clean with a paper napkin and returned to its sheath. After the hukam has been read, uncover the gur prashad. If some of the ghee has separated on top, the Sevadar should carefully and gracefully stir the contents with their hand so that the ghee and the cold layer on top are mixed in. First, serve the Panj Piyade by meditating on the Panj Piyade while serving five portions into one of the smaller bowls and then distributing them to a random selection of five people in the Sangit. Some Gurdwaras follow the protocol that these five portions must be served only to Amritari Sikhs but it is also common to choose the five people closest to the server. Second, serve the Guru Granthi's portion into the second small bowl and cover it with a napkin or cloth. Then place it at the base of the Manji Sahib, not touching the Ramalas. Finally, serve the Sangit. The head Sevadar can direct the amount to serve to each person so that everyone gets served by assessing the size of the Sangit and the amount of the Guru Prashad prepared. An amount that fits inside a gently closed fist is typically a good amount. While proper care should be taken to serve the Guru Prashad gracefully, it is also important to move at a moderately fast pace so as to serve as many people in the Sangit as possible in a short amount of time.
When the Gur Prashad is served to the Sangit, make sure not to directly touch people's hands as they receive the Gur Prashad. This is to preserve the sanctity of the Gur Prashad and to ensure proper hygiene. Scoop the Gur Prashad from the side of the serving bowl by sliding the hand from the side of the fingers rather than leading into the Gur Prashad with the fingernails. The best practice is to gently squeeze the Gur Prashad into a loose but neat, irregularly shaped ball and carefully drop it from an inch or two above into the recipient's hands. It is desirable to avoid dropping crumbs of Gur Prashad while going between the serving bowl and the recipient's hands. We receive Gur Prashad with two hands cupped as we are receiving the Guru's blessings. Gur Prashad is not food but a blessing. Whether or not to eat it according to dietary restrictions is up to each person. If someone is unable to eat it, it can be shared with others. Aside from the Guru Granthi whose portion was placed in front of the Siri Guru Granth Sahib and who will retrieve this portion after their seva of caring for the Siri Guru Granth Sahib is completed, make sure that the entire Sangit gets served, including the Kirtanis or musicians and the other Sevadars. After all the Sangit has been served, you may be served by someone else with freshly washed hands. Nowadays, it is common to distribute paper napkins to the Sangit to wipe their hands afterwards and it is a wonderful way for children to perform seva. It is best to serve Gur Prashad soon after preparing it and it should no longer be served if it is older than 24 hours. If there are leftovers, offer the Sangit more until it is finished. If the Siri Guru Granth Sahib will remain in Prakash available for the Sangit members to receive the Guru's Darshan, then the Guru Prashad can remain on the Prashad table next to the Siri Guru Granth Sahib and can be served to the Sangit members as they come into Guru's presence. Leftover Prashad can be taken home and served to friends and family. It is blessed and it should be treated with respect. We hope you enjoyed this how-to video. Please let us at Sikh Dharma International know if there are any other topics about Sikh Dharma that you would like to see in this video series. You can see this series at our website at www.sikhdharma.org along with our other resources and information about our upcoming events. Wahiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahiguru Ji Ki Fateh.